Three words, plug and play. That's how easy it is for you to participate in the decentralization of Ethereum. And let me tell you guys, it just hits so different when you are running your own phone node for yourself, interacting with the blockchain through your own dedicated RPC and not relying on the inferior RPC to use MetaMask. DAP node makes running a plug and play Ethereum node a reality because for the price of a mid to upper tier PC, you get a fully dedicated mini machine delivered to your doorstep that requires minimal setup to get up and running. Now, I have to admit, when I first got the package, I was quite intimidated. The instructions for the DAP node itself is sparse if non-existent. Instead, if you follow the documentation website at docs.dapnode.io, everything will be much more clear. Seriously, just, just do it. I'm not gonna show you all of the setup instructions because they are already quite well documented and you can also check out the Discord. Lots of questions, there are a lot of answers. There really is no doubt, at least for me anyway, as a non-technical person, there is an initial mental hurdle. For example, I had my doubts around my internet connection, the terabyte storage requirements for running a full node, whether I'm running a full node or a remote node, and a few other technical things like which execution client do I run, which consensus client do I run? And I personally wanted to verify all of this before I actually plugged it in. But seriously, guys, it really is plug and play after running through it. It's stupid simple, especially if you already have a good understanding of your setup at home. I'll attempt to answer most of the questions that I personally had when I was setting up my DAP node up. First of all, the requirements, the machine. My machine is the base setup you can get from the DAP node website. That means it's the DAP node home i732-2T, which comes with 32 gigabytes of RAM and two terabytes of storage. From all my research online, the minimum specs for running a phone node is 16 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of storage, which this base model well exceeds. Most research on the internet will say and recommend your machine should have at least two terabytes of storage, and that should be more than enough to last you for the next few years. Although I've seen serious home node operators run up to eight terabytes of storage on their machine. Not a big deal buy the machine that suits your needs. For my purposes of just being able to run a node that I can interact with the blockchain through my own sort of setup, the base DAP node is more than sufficient. Next, the internet. I had a lot of questions around my internet. I'm actually at home right now at my parents' house. Hey, mom! The meatloaf! And I'm not sure what kind of internet setup they are running. I know for a fact that if you want to run a DAP node, you need a solid internet connection and potentially unlimited bandwidth. I had some doubts about my bandwidth limitations with my internet service provider, so I had to call in and verify. You don't want to pay for crazy overage fees because, well, let me tell you. So I'm running Nethermind for my execution client and Lodestar for my consensus client. And this particular setup requires give or take 600 gigabytes to sync up to the latest state in the Ethereum blockchain. And even now, after being fully synced, it's taking up about 700 gigabytes. I've read online also that the Nethermind execution client uses up about 27 gigabytes per week as the Ethereum database and blockchain grows. That's a lot of data your machine will be using. Make sure you've got internet connection that can support that sort of consumption. A quick Google search says that you need, in terms of download speeds, a minimum of 25 megabits per second. So at home right now, I'm running 500 megabits per second. In terms of syncing, at least with the Nethermind and Lodestar sync, it took about three, four hours. But I've read online that other combinations of execution and consensus setup can take up to 11, 12, 24 hours. So it all really depends. You want to make sure you have the internet speed to be able to sync the entire chain. Because, so oh man, oh my God, you don't want to pay like thousands of dollars by going over your pen with. Beyond the machine and the internet, you need a computer at home. I am personally using my MacBook Air to interact with the DAP node UI in a browser. Not a power user by any means, but more than sufficient. Really, at the end of the day, all you really need is a browser. So you can actually set up your DAP node from your phone if you had to. I'm not sure how that is like. I only set it up through my computer browser, so your miles may vary. And then that's it. Honestly, everything else comes out of the box. You get your ethernet cable. You use this to plug your DAP node directly into your modem. You get a power adapter and plug for your DAP node to give it power. And inside the box, it came with some screws and mounts. 
I don't use it. There's also a recovery only USB. It's such a joy to be able to set this up because it's a dedicated machine for running blockchain nodes. All the software comes pre-installed. There's very little headaches that come with the process. Once you connect this machine with your ethernet cable to your modem, you should be able to find DAP node Wi-Fi as a connectable network on your computer. Connect to that Wi-Fi and then the default password to connect into that Wi-Fi is just DAP node. And because your DAP node is connected straight into your modem, you can still use your regular internet directly through this connection. What's next? Well, you just go into your browser and then you navigate to my.dapnode, and that's HTTP colon slash slash my.dapnode, which will take you into the dapnode UI, another login prompt. This time you'll use the username admin and password password and that will get you inside the UI. That's honestly like, that's really as easy as it gets for plugging and playing. They're really not kidding about that. So you might have noticed all the default passwords are actually extremely insecure, which is why upon login, the interface will generously remind you that you should reset the password on both the Wi-Fi network and also the user interface in your browser. You want to do this because if it's not secure, then someone malicious can get access to your node. Once you log in, you'll be prompted with setup steps for the actual node itself. For example, do you want to run a full node or a remote node? Honestly, I had a lot of trouble understanding like the differences between a phone node and a, and a remote node. I mean, I, I understand what phone node means, but remote node, I, I had a bit of trouble wrapping my head around. To summarize, to reap the benefits of full participation in the decentralization of Ethereum, you will want to run a phone node. This means your machine will host the Ethereum blockchain's latest state. Your machine will act as one node in a giant network of nodes, verifying all the newest blocks being put through by the network's validators. And I don't mean just newest blocks, I mean, you're just verifying the blockchain as it grows. In effect, even though it's invisible, you and your machine will actually be a core part of the network. Thank you for your contribution to public good. On the other hand, you can use your machine to connect to a remote node. This means you would trust some centralized node operator somewhere. And right now it's currently maintained by DAP node. I can think of a few worse guys that you'd have to trust, but I'm not honestly quite sure technically what a remote node means, but once your machine is up and running and you're using your specific node to interact with the blockchain, I don't think it would be too much different from using plain old MetaMask and the Infura API. And that's it. Once you are done setting up, and you've chosen your full node, you'll pick your execution client and consensus client, and then you will sync your node up to the latest state of the Ethereum blockchain. For me, the number one use case is to be able to put my own transactions through MetaMask through my own full node, as opposed to the Infura API. In MetaMask, if you just go to add a network, that will open up your web app for MetaMask, and then you go to add network manually, and then you can just give it a name. Let's just say, how Chizo Ethereum full node. For the RPC URL, you would paste in the link from your package for your execution client. In my case, I'm using Nethermind, so I'm going through nethermind.public.dap node port 8545. And then chain ID is one because I'm running an Ethereum mainnet full node. And currency symbol is ETH. The block explorer is etherscan.io. Oops, missing a P there. And once I hit save, then I can switch to my phone node and there you have it. I'm connected to my node. If I put a, a transaction through, it will go through my phone node and then it will be routed to the rest of the network through my node, which is honestly just awesome. I just want to say a mega thank you to the Ethereum Foundation and the Ethereum Support Program for accepting my Run a Node grant program. They ran this over the summer of 2023 in June, I believe, and all I had to do was submit an application to say why I wanted to run a node and what sort of project I wanted to run with a node. So they were gracious enough to send me this machine. I am honestly humbled. I feel like it's a true privilege to be able to contribute back to the network, even just doing something as simple as running a full node independently. So thank you guys.